Alright guys, so in today's video we're going to be testing five random things from Amazon. I know that's kind of a shocker, you know, we don't usually do that kind of stuff, so just bear with me. The first thing that we're going to be testing is called the Bacon Wave. Basically it's just like a, it's a bacon tray that you can put your bacon on to cook it in the microwave. It claims that it has the frying pan taste without the frying pan. It's also BPA free, if that concerns you. It says it separates bacon from unwanted grease. We will see about that. And it cooks up to 14 slices of bacon. The, I have the tray. Something that I want to know is that, we all know that bacon is extremely greasy, obviously. I, I don't know if this tray is deep enough to hold the grease from 14 slices of bacon. So that's gonna be kind of interesting. I think that it's probably gonna be, you know, overflowing or close to overflowing. The way it works from the pictures, so you're supposed to take your bacon. Oh, so this bacon is like longer than the thing. Why's this thing gotta be so difficult? So you take your bacon, you put it in there, then you're supposed to skewer it to hold it in place, I guess. I think, let's put all the, let's put all the slices of bacon on there and then maybe skewer it at the end. I'm already seeing a problem here. All the the ends of the bacon kind of just clump up from where the bacon is wider than the tray. I don't think this is any like special bacon. It's just regular bacon. So it's not like it's extra long cut or anything weird. And this right here makes 14 pieces of bacon. <laughs> I don't know about this. This seems like a, a lot of bacon for this little tiny crammed tray. I'm gonna try to, I, I think you're, you should be lifting each piece up before you skewer it. So I'm gonna try to do that. Okay. Now you still, I mean, you can see all this like fat and like flabby ends hanging off the edge. I think that's gonna be kind of a problem. And the grease is definitely gonna drip off into the microwave. And the middle parts are kind of just like sagging onto the tray. All right, there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna tuck this, these edges into the tray best I can. All right, we got our tray full of bacon. So let's get the microwave. Now, before I even open this microwave, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, it's dirty in here, okay? This is my garage microwave. I don't clean it. I don't care about it. It's dirty, okay? So don't be surprised. I also did read the instructions for this product and for the wattage of this microwave, we are supposed to, see it's dirty, told you, no surprise. We are supposed to put this bacon in here for nine minutes and 30 seconds. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now let's just, let's see what happens. Ow, it's hot. Now, before, before I even open this, I'm gonna go ahead and make a prediction. I don't think that I don't smell enough bacon, and I don't think that I heard enough popping and sizzling that this bacon, I don't think it's cooked all the way. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm wrong. That actually looks hot is how it really looks. Hmm. Hmm. Can I grab it over here? Okay, so that, that's actually, that actually is done. So the tray, first of all, my first question was if the tray was gonna hold all the grease. The tray actually did hold all the grease and it's actually not even close to being full. So I guess I kind of overestimated how much grease I thought this uh, bacon would produce. The sides seem to not really be much of a problem. They kind of just shrunk up on both sides. Didn't really expect that. I figured those would actually be a problem. It does seem like some a lot of the bacon kind of formed it together, but you know, what can you do really? So now it's time for the, yeah, you can see it's kind of stuck together. No big deal. Hmm, ow, that's hot. Let me see if I can find a piece that's got more meat on it. A lot of these pieces are just fat. Ooh, it's hot. Ooh, it's burning me. Ooh, you gotta, you gotta take a good sample before you really give your opinion. I will give this bacon, I will give this device and this bacon like a seven out of 10. It's not 
It's not quite as good as bacon that was made in a pan, but it's also not bad. And the device also does exactly what it says it'll do. The, the chart for like how long you're supposed to leave in the microwave seems to be pretty much spot on. The device itself works. It's a, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was gonna be a problem with the edges of the bacon and whatever, but it seems to be the perfect size. The tray can hold all the fat and the grease and all that. So overall, I give this thing about a seven out of 10. So before we go any further, the sponsor of today's video is Manscaped. Manscaped has released their new performance package 4.0. So I'm gonna go over that with you. First and foremost, what you're gonna get is a lawnmower 4.0. And this has all of the good parts of the 3.0 with a couple added extras. So you have your skin safe technology with your LED light, just like the 3.0. You also have a 90 minute battery life is waterproof. And then they even have an added travel mode so you can press the button three times and that'll put it in travel mode so that way you can throw this thing inside of a bag when you're traveling and it's not going to get turned on by itself nothing like that it also has a new docking station that is uh, wireless charging so you just throw it in there and it starts charging also with the trimmer you now get two different guards so you can trim it two different lengths so that's very nice some other things you're gonna get in the kit are, you're gonna get a bottle of ball toner. You're also gonna get a bottle of ball deodorant. And then for a limited time, whenever you buy the Performance Package 4.0, you'll get two free gifts. It will be a pair of anti-chafing boxer briefs, which are very nice. And then second, you will get a leather toiletry bag so that you can store all of your products. Two very nice gifts, especially for free. So if you are interested in the Performance Package 4.0, or maybe if you just want a new cologne, or maybe you want to try out the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, which is very nice, or maybe you just need a new razor, you can click the link in the top of my description. If you use code TUBE, you'll get 20% off plus free shipping. All right, so our next product, while we're on the topic of food, is this Presto Rotating Pizza Oven. Now, I saw this thing on Amazon, and honestly, as soon as I saw it, the first thought that came to my head was, that's not gonna work. There's something about this whole like open design, to me, just screams that no matter what you put on here, I just don't think that it's going to be cooked as well as it would in a regular oven. As far as the way this thing is like built and the way it feels, it's, I'm not impressed. It seems very cheap. The, like, the tray is very, like, there's nothing supporting it. It just kind of, like, sits there. And then the way it's made, it's made so that you can take this tray off whenever the food's done. But then, whenever you put the tray down, you can't, it doesn't even sit, like, le on a level surface. So, like, it's just really weird. All this thing is is just two heating elements and then, like, a little motor that rotates the tray. There's nothing special here. It's, uh... It just seems really weird. I'm not impressed with anything about it so far. The tray is the tray is the weirdest part to me. It's just kind of really flimsy, and it's like while it's rotating, while it's rotating, it's very like very weird. Like it's like the motor is extremely weak. I feel like if you put a lot of food on here, that like maybe it wouldn't even have enough power to like rotate it. Maybe it does have up here. It has a slider. So that you can use just the top burner, just the bottom burner, or a combination of both. I mean, I guess that's nice. It has a dial for the timer. This dial, the dial is labeled in sections of four. What kind of psychopath makes a dial in sections of four? Can we not do sections of five for people like me that are dumb, that can't really do math? What's wrong with five? Why can't we go five, 10, 15, 20? Why do we gotta go four? Like this, this doesn't make any sense. So I don't like that. I actually, I really, really hate that. Like, don't make me do math while I'm trying to cook food and like try to calculate all this stuff. Just sections of five. I can do that. Five, 10. I can take a sock off. 15. You know what I mean? We don't need sections of four. What kind of, what kind of garbage is this? So I really don't like that. Let's go ahead and get a pizza on it. We're going to be using, I'm going to cook one pizza on here and then one pizza in the house on a regular oven. Um, I'm going to be using two DiGiorno, just regular DiGiorno pizzas. Now, there is a discrepancy. The, the box of these pizzas says, says that it takes 18 to 21 minutes to cook. I'm gonna go 20 minutes, or I'm, I'm, I'm going 20 minutes on the oven in the house. This thing says that it cooks frozen pizzas in 15 minutes, in 12 to 15 minutes. 
I don't think that it's going to cook this pizza faster than the oven would. Um, I'm going to put it on 15 minutes. If it needs more, we'll do more. Oh, and see, look at this. If you don't get the weight right, is that even gonna rotate? I did this thing. Okay, I guess it'll, I guess we'll be all right. So let's turn the dial to, we're gonna go 15 minutes. At least I think that's 15. See, if it was done in sections of five, I would know exactly where 15 is, but it's got 12 and then a dot and then 16. I don't know where 15 is. So I'm assuming that's 15. We'll just let it sit here and it'll do its thing and then we'll see how cooked it is. Alright, so this timer should be going off any second now. As you can see, it's, <laughs> it's not looking good. I think we probably should have went for the, uh, the 20 minutes because it is as much as I want to hate on this thing, it is, you know, starting to brown around the edges, but all the cheese in the middle, it's just not, uh, not getting melted. And I do have a feeling that the middle is probably going to be undercooked because of this whole, like, open design, but the edges are probably going to actually be pretty good. There we go. So, let me, uh, let's go ahead and stop it so I can look at it. Yeah, the edges are hot. Uh, the underside looks very undercooked kind of like the middle so let's go ahead and we're gonna give it another uh, five minutes or at least what I assume is five minutes all right we're gonna put it about there since you know we don't have five minute increments so we're just gonna go a little bit over over the four mark and hope that's five and then uh, then we'll see what it looks like All right, so once again, this timer should be just about done. It looks like I could possibly be eating my words on this one. The middle looks like it's done. There's definitely around the crust and everything looks done. It's sizzling like a nice hot pizza. Come on, it's only gotta have like 30 seconds left. This actually looks pretty good. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, pull this thing off of here. Ow, that thing's hot. Let's just shove that thing off to the side. All right, we'll put that there. I'm gonna wait for the for the one out of the oven to get done. All right, so this is our pizza out of the oven. I've given both of these pizzas about 10 minutes or so to kind of cool down so I don't burn myself. Whenever you compare these two, they do look very similar. Um, this one from the uh, Presto thing, the edges seem to be a little bit, they're brown, but they seem to start, they seem to be right on the edge of getting burnt. Whereas these edges seem to just be brown. The cheese on this one, honestly, honestly, looks um, a little bit more cooked. This cheese seems to be not so much cooked. Both of these went for pretty much exactly 20 minutes for both of them. Let's go ahead, let's, let's cut them, and uh, let's listen to the crunch as we cut them. That's going to give us a very good idea of uh, how cooked they are. So we'll start with the oven one first. Okay, not bad. Okay, what I picked up on, being the expert pizza cutter that I am, it seems like the outsides are pretty crispy and it gets kind of soft towards the middle. We'll see, uh, see how this one holds up. Mmm. I kind of seem to be uh, getting the same, same signals from this one. The outside seems to be a little bit more done. Center seems to be a little bit soft. I'll try this one first from the oven. Hmm, that's good. The bottom is actually I said that center seemed a little bit soft, but the bottom actually seems to be cooked pretty good. Cheese is a little bit stringy, which I don't mind. I am getting very greasy on my hand. The crust is very good. Overall, very good. Let's see if this one's any better. Oh, pepperoni fell off. This crust, 
you can tell that this crust, I think, is, a, is cooked just a little bit more, maybe? It's, a, it's just a little bit uh, chewier. Let's try the crust. It's, it has that same chewiness. It doesn't have the crunch that this has. This is hard work trying to tell the difference between these two. I gotta stand here and eat this pizza. This is tough. Anyway, I think where this one is like cooked open air, I think this one is gonna tend to be a little bit drier. That, uh, that dryness is what is leading to the crust being a little bit chewy. Where this one, you know, the moisture doesn't really have a place to go so it stays inside the pizza. The crust is a little bit a little bit softer, but it's a little bit crunchier on the outside than this. This one just kind of has like a like an overall general like chewiness to it as far as the crust goes. Everything else, all the flavor is the exact same. And to be completely honest, neither these aren't really too far off of each other. I would say that this one is better probably by like 10%. So like not a huge difference, but that extra little chewiness does kind of make me pick this one over this one. So, but overall, it's, uh, so far it's pretty good. So, let's move on to something else. Alright, so our next item is going to be this. I know this looks like some type of weird, like, dinner plate with a handle or something, but what it really is, is... Let's see if we can... It is a collapsible stool. And I'm sure that, uh, you guys have probably seen this reviewed by other people before. So, I'm not really concerned whether or not this thing works. It's obviously it works, collapsible, put it down, you can sit on it, it does everything a stool is supposed to do. We obviously know it works. What we're testing is, on the Amazon ad, it claims that this stool can hold 397 pounds, which I think is a very oddly specific number. So we're gonna figure out how much this stool can hold. It seems pretty flexible, and it doesn't, uh, just something about this to me doesn't feel like it's going to hold 397 pounds. So, we're going to take it outside, put a bunch of weight on it, and see how it holds up. Alright, so, just for testing purposes, I'll show you that the stool works like a normal stool. You can sit it down, you can sit on it, works just fine. You can, if I rock back and forth, or like side to side, I can kind of feel the body of it kind of flex a little bit, which doesn't really give me a lot of hope for it holding a bunch of weight. The, but other than that, I mean, you can, you can stand on it. You can, it can do everything a regular stool can do. I have two uh, 45 pound plates, which is 90. And then I have 10 cinder blocks, which the cinder blocks I weighed, they go, they weigh between 33.2 to 33.8 pounds a piece. So all together, we have Ironically, roughly 420 pounds. That should be enough to collapse the stool or, you know, make it fail in some type of way. 45 pound plates. It gives us 90 pounds. Oh, this is going to get real wobbly. I don't have very much hope for this. This actually might make it. Ooh. We only have two cinder blocks left. So this is close to 400 pounds, just by itself. I think that's, that should be 400, or close, really close to it. Here we go. Ooh, it's, it's creaking. <laughs> this is 420 pounds. It wants, it wants to fall forward so bad. I want it, I want to try to make it balance. But I want, it wants to go so bad. Come on, move it back a little bit. All right, so. Can, a stool, can this stool hold 397 pounds? It absolutely can, and it's falling apart. I'm gonna let it go, and we'll see what happens.
That was actually extremely satisfying. I heard something fall inside of the garage. Nothing important. So we lost a cinder block. literally just been reduced. It literally like, it just like exploded on itself. That's crazy. I would not have expected that. I thought maybe it would like fall or, you know, tip over or something. I didn't expect it to just like completely collapse on itself. So to answer our original question, I guess, can the stool hold over 397 pounds? For one, it can, it can hold up to 397 pounds, but if you choose to go over that weight limit, This is what will happen to your stool. This thing is literally the top and bottom with a spring left and every single other piece just completely exploded. As long as you stay under the weight limit, I think it's actually a pretty good stool, but as soon as you go over that weight limit, you're done. So the next product that we are gonna test is called the Draft Top. Now, what this is supposed to be used for is you're supposed to, be able to take a can I think it's mainly supposed to be used for like a beer can, but all cans are the same. And it's supposed to be like a can opener that opens up the top of your can to make it like a glass, because I guess as a society, we've evolved to the point where we're too good to just pop the top and like pour it into a glass. So we gotta make this contraption to cut the top off. Just put it here. Oh, come on, don't be slipping off of here. All right, let me squeeze. Why did nothing happen? Shouldn't it be piercing the can whenever I squeeze it? That's squeezed all the way. Oh. Oh, you gotta move it. Great invention. I'm so glad they made this thing. It seems to have worked, at least a little bit. How am I supposed to get this out of here? Do you just like shove it down in there? Is this what you're supposed to do? You just shove it down in there, you crush your can, and then now you have a, an open lid, right? So you can just, oh wow. What an enjoyable experience. So glad I did this. Like what, like, what is this? What's the, what's the point of this thing? Did I do it wrong? Like open it beforehand? No, this is worse. This is way worse. This is, this is a million times worse. But see, if you pop the top, you can stick your finger in here, inside the little hole, and pull this piece out. So now, instead of having a crushed can that leaked everywhere, with the top still inside of it, now you have a crushed can that leaked everywhere that you were able to take the top out of. You see how much better that is? What a great invention. This is top notch, 10 out of 10. I'm really baffled. I don't understand how you're supposed to spin it without crushing the can. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try maybe like holding it at the bottom. Maybe that'll do something. It's, it's literally impossible. You cannot spin this thing with enough pressure to cut the top off of it without crushing the can. Like, you, you just can't do it. Oh, that one didn't even work that much. We'll just have to, we'll have to do this one manually. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Don't run off the table. You, now you just, you gotta go fishing inside. You can pull your tab out. Then once again, we can have a very enjoyable experience. This is one of the, <laughs> one of the dumbest inventions I think I've ever tested. There's no way to use it without it just completely destroying the can and spilling the drink everywhere. There's honestly no point to even cut the top off of it because it comes with a tab, okay? You can pop the tab and then you can just drink it. I don't get it. I give this thing like a, a zero out of 10. So last but not least, we are gonna test out two different can toppers 
These are just, these, both of these are basically supposed to do the same thing. It's just a topper that you put on top of a regular can, and it's supposed to keep it from spilling. All right, so this one obviously is supposed to make the top of it look more like a bottle. These are just supposed to be kind of like a, a top, <laughs> to be honest. I really want to see if these are going to be effective at stopping them from spilling because of the, the carbonation. I have a feeling that, like, if you knock it over, that the carbonation is just going to, like, blow the top off, and then what's the point? So you're supposed to open them up first. Oh, this is actually kind of... Ooh, I don't really like that. I was expecting, like, a, like a snap. Like a, you know, something that seemed like it would be secure. Ugh, it doesn't give me that confident, like, snap, like it's fully secured. It's a bottle. You can drink out of it. I don't like that whenever you drink out of it, all your, all the pop just kind of, like, washes on the top of the can and then, like, back down into the can because the top of the cans are probably dirty. I washed these. Let's try this one, see if this one will give me that secure snap that I want to hear. See, that's what I wanted to hear with that. I wanted to hear that secure snap so I know, okay, this is fully secure. This one's not that bad. Hmm. All right, so obviously they both snap on it and they, uh, they attach themselves. Let's see what happens whenever you spill it. So you're walking along. I think that lid was tight too. All right, the lid's tight. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why I did not see that coming. That actually, that genuinely scared me. Pretty much what I thought was gonna happen is exactly what happened. As soon as the carbonation builds up, it just blows the top off of it. Just to give it the benefit of the doubt, let's try another one. Same thing, does not give me that secure snap that I, that I want. Okay. The lid's not leaking on this one. But the pressure's probably still building up. Oh, no, now it's leaking. One more time. It's gonna, it's gonna blow off any second, I can just tell. The lid's already leaking again. Maybe if we drop it. Ooh, I thought for sure that was gonna blow off. Okay, maybe maybe this one's a little more secure. I was expecting like the, whenever you open a regular bottle, like a pssst from the pressure. Maybe where the lid leaks, it just won't build up enough pressure. Really tighten this thing down here. No, the lid still blows off no matter what. So for those, if you're gonna be using them, don't shake the can, don't drop the can, and so pretty much like just ignore all the benefits of having a topper on the can. You might as well just hold the can and drink it normally. If you are like at a fair or something, or somewhere where there's bees, you could put the top on there. As long as you don't spill the can, nothing, like no bugs or bees could get inside of it. It actually doesn't say that it prevents spills. Oh, this one, this one's already gonna, this one's already ready to blow. And all it's done is sit here. Look at it. Look at the top. Watch. And that, that was literally just from sitting there. Just having this thing closed. It was building up pressure. You know, I was like, like half expecting these to, you know, work a little bit and like be semi-impressive. I don't even know, I don't even know what to test now. They obviously, they, they clearly don't work. Let's see if this thing will just blow it, the top off just from sitting. There's enough pressure that this feels, like if I put a brand new can beside it, I mean, they feel identical. Well, not quite identical, but there's a lot of pressure building up in here. Yeah, it might, it might not build up enough pressure to do it. I might give it a little squeeze, see how far away we are. Oh yeah, it's gonna, it would take a lot of pressure to blow the lid off. Ooh. I'm done with this. I'm gonna have to clean. There's gonna be ants everywhere in this garage. Like pop toppers, things that go on top of pop cans that can, uh, at least these two are pretty much trash. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. 
I'll see you in the next one.